This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, we have a guest and we're all properly bearded. Oh, <laughs> are we just going to use my line like that? Well, I got a line for you, but you're going to have to you have to wait for it. We have a guest this week, Patrick Walton, aka P Dubs, and we're going to talk about arcade stuff. Oh, that, that's when I should hit the button, right? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 251 for Thursday, the 2nd of July, 2020. Thank goodness Kent puts these damn dates in here. I'd never get that right. <laughs> this is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we actually have a guest this week. Man, I'm I, like, I don't even know what to do with myself with a guest. How do, how do we do guests, man? It's been so long. It's been a while since we've, since we've geeked out with a guest. This is awesome. Welcome, Patrick. Welcome to thank you. Ritual Misery. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Really excited to be on, guys. And uh, really excited to talk about geeky things with my fellow geeks. This is pretty cool. Yeah, this, the, uh, yeah. That, that's the for best the, part for, about this show. For those of you <laughs> unfamiliar with P-Dubs, he has a YouTube channel where he talks about classic arcade gaming, uh, particularly the At Games Legends Ultimate cabinet and the arcade one-up machines and any of the uh the really cool uh home arcade market that's really blown up over the last year we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that stuff mm-hmm. uh amos how how has your week been ah uh, man so since we <laughs> since we talked last week um i've really done two things and they go hand in hand mm. Steam's summer sale is happening right now. Mm-hmm. And are you a fan of the American Trucker series or European Truck series? Like, you know, I mean, I've watched some streams of it. Yeah. Uh, what, what about you, Patrick? Have, have you? That's the uh, that's the truck simulation game, right? Yeah. Like it's a full blown simulation. Yeah. I've never played it personally. I've watched a couple of videos on YouTube. Look pretty awesome. Look pretty cool. Um, did you get, did you play it? Uh, I, I have, but I found something better. Uh, oh, uh, farms, farm simulator. <laughs> no, 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 no. A game that I've originally saw hot beverages, shout out to M hot beverages playing on gosh, was it ritual? Oh, not ritual Missouri with diamond club TV or maybe it was one of oh, my first early oh, streams. Wow. Like it was a long time. It was, I was in Korea when I saw her playing it. Oh, wow. That was quite a while. Um, Imagine a game where your entire job is to just exist. You can do kind of whatever you want as long as you're still in a spaceship. You can mine, you can ship, you can transport cargo, transport transport Uh, personnel, you can be a pirate, you can bounty hunt, all those things. And it's basically open-ended and you can do any of it and there's no real direction. So that's Elite Dangerous. And... I love, so it's a complicated layout to learn, but once you learn like the commands and stuff and how things work, I've been playing the hell out of it, doing light speed jumps, and everything else. And it's that brainless game. It's that, that, that thing that takes your mind off of whatever else is going on while still making you feel something accomplished. It's pretty awesome. That's kind of, that's kind of like my real life, just directionless. <laughs> Yeah, but this is simulation kit. <laughs> um, but while I've been playing that, I've been catching up on the storied history of the not very old, the Hamilton musical, which is being released nice. later on tonight. Actually, in what in less than five hours on uh, Disney Plus, the mm-hmm. movie recording of the musical with the original cast. Oh, that's and- awesome. And um, that is, those two things have basically consumed all my free time. I'm not going to talk about work. Work is boring. I I edit podcasts for a living. Like, that's boring. Um, But having Elite Dangerous on one screen, the controls for Elite Dangerous on another screen, and then on my third screen, having YouTube videos about the history and the breakdowns and the music of Hamilton, that's been my week. That's that's pretty much all I've been doing. I've been geeking out about aimless space games and a musical that I've heard 500 times and never seen. <laughs> wow. Uh, this was a four day work week for me. I get tomorrow off because it's the, um, 
the Fourth of July uh, observed celebration since Saturday is the actual holiday. It's also your birthday, um, so you finally be as old as I am again. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's always convenient that that my birthday falls when it does because I think I've only had to work on my birthday exactly one time. And you were probably um, deployed, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was in <laughs> Iraq. That's why I had to work on my birthday. <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, like this, why is it, is it just me or, or do like short work weeks, do they always seem longer? Cause that's like, it always seems to be the case for me because everyone tries to cram in like, Oh, it's a short work week. So we got to get ahead on this thing and that thing. And it seems like you know, it's supposed to be a 40 hour work week, but it feels like a 60 hour work week. No, just, just me. Uh, <laughs> part, part of it, part of it is the anticipation for the long weekend. Like it, it, if you were only getting one day off, your four days wouldn't have felt as long as it did because mm. you had this anticipation built in. And the other part of it is military is dumb and they always try to cram shit in where it doesn't need to be. Like yeah, that's harassing yeah. me about this project this week is not going to make it get done faster. It's just going to make me more unwilling to help you next week. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And for, for anyone just joining us and uh, unfamiliar with us, Amos and I are both retired Air Force veterans. I am the uh, crazy one that still actually works for the Air Force as a as a government civilian. And um, I so yeah, am the I have one to that deal goes with military to, stuff. Still. And, and I am the one that goes to anti-Trump rallies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Not, not <laughs> keep in mind, not anti-Republican rallies, anti-Trump, the individual, that particular individual. I just want to make sure I'm clear on that. That's awesome. Just to clarify. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Pat Patrick, what have you had going on this week? Uh, this week was actually pretty cool. So not only am I a fan of retro and arcade gaming, and I love playing uh, consoles and things like that, I'm also a big fan of board games, the board games that we grew up with. So um, earlier this week, my wife and my son and I, we pulled out, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it or not. It's a classic Milton Bradley game. It's called Hero Quest. It's kind of yes. like a Dungeons and Dragons ver board game. Uh, it's a, you know, it was actually called, if you guys remember, it was called a gaming system mm -hmm. because it had expansion packs and all that kind of stuff. And I have that board game. Plus like, I have two of the expansion packs and we played, we, we had that out. We had it on the kitchen table. We had all our skeletons, our figures, our dice. And it was really cool to, uh, to play because we used to play it when my son was younger and then, you know, he got older and then it got shelved along with all I got, dude, I got like battle masters. I got. I got all these old Milton Bradley, like dungeon crawling board games. Right. And it just felt really good to do that. Right. You know, get away from the beeps and the boops and yeah. uh, sitting in front of the TV. Right. I, playing what? retro board games was the geekiest thing of my of my week this week. I had a lot of fun. Was Battle Masters the game where you had a big mat and everybody? Yes. Scenarios? OK. OK. So. So that's the one where, yeah, go ahead, Amos. But but we played them at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, I often conflate those two games. Yes, because, because, well, they're so they're built like, and they they don't even have like dissimilar combat systems. Like it's it's, it's kind of in the same vein of each other. Um, we uh, so here at Quest, Patrick, uh, Alfie, and I played that overnight yeah, one night. Different, played, different Patrick. Different yeah, Patrick. different Patrick. Uh, uh, we played that over overnight one night at Pat's house and literally played the entire game, finished it, and we were taking turns doing the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 reader. And at the end of it, we Song gone. Yeah, we, at the end of it, we <laughs> yeah, said, Screw it. yeah, oh my god. We yes. we turned the book back to the first page and started over, and we had a blast. It was amazing. Yeah. You know what's really cool about that game, though, is yeah, even though it comes with a booklet and Zargon is basically your your dread your dungeon master, right? What's really cool about that game is even if you do like they have fourteen quests in that quest book just to get you started, right? You could just make up your own quests, right? It's just like Dungeons and Dragons, right? Mm -hmm. And just have Zargon control the board and say, okay, that door there, there's four orcs in here. There's a there's a potion and a boot, you know what I'm saying? Like all that kind of stuff, the stuff we grew up doing. Yep. Um, so, yeah, uh, even though we've played through these games and the expansion packs, we can even bust out and just do a brand new game from scratch. Right. Which is really cool. Just make it up as you go. Use your imagination. So yeah. I love it. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite board games of all time. Yeah, that is awesome. And 
so I've over the last uh, I don't know six six months to a year I've been back getting back into Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, mm-hmm. My son, my oldest son, is uh, quite an accomplished dungeon master, and uh, he's been running some games for us, and it's it's been a blast. He is going to run a different, a brand new style game for us in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, uh, but it's it's basically. So think Dungeons and Dragons, but instead of like the medieval fantasy setting, it's 1980s slasher flick setting. <laughs> Whoa. So, so your character, instead of like, you know, warrior or mage or whatever, you're like the jock or the popular girl or something like that. And instead of rolling dice to uh, to resolve an encounter, you pull a Jenga piece. <laughs> and and if if the Jenga tower collapses... You are dead. <laughs> I, 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 is, this, is this a legit game or? There's a, he found rules for it somewhere was on this, the internet. I, th- I think it was like a I, made its way through the United States. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he found it on Reddit or something like that. I don't I, think it's a, like a packaged uh, type of thing. This sounds like everybody at White Wolf smoked a little too much one night and just started writing <laughs> some shit down. And it ah, sounds so, fucking awesome. And I can't wait to play it while smoking. <laughs> so I just I just got a text from my son. He said it's called Dread. 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 Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Oh. Interesting. I, I wonder if we'd be able to make that like a, a group play with like small Jenga towers and everybody pulls. And then like you can hear a Jenga tower falling. I've got giant Jenga. <laughs> right. You know, so like you could do it over Discord and just play a game over Discord and everybody be in Hell different yeah. places with all these... I mean, you can well, you can definitely hear my Jenga tower fall because it's the giant Jenga on a concrete floor. You can hear the shit. Oh yeah, away. yeah. I've got a set. I've got a set <laughs> myself. A giant Jenga set myself. Yeah. They kept asking why I want a giant Jenga instead of a regular Jenga, and I was like, because I like to drink. <laughs> right. Like, but that doesn't make any sense. I said it doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's hilarious. Um. So Hero Quest, like, is this a game that you've had since since back in the oh, yeah. mid '90s or whatever? Or yep. did you find yep. it again? My parents, my parents bought it for me, and I still have the original system, the original box. All the figures have been hand painted carefully with love. Um, uh, to you know, it's it's all it's all downstairs right now. Otherwise, yeah. I put some of it in front of the camera here, but. The, the hardest part about that and the most time consuming and stressful part was painting every single f- uh, figure, painting all the furniture, you know what I mean? Really customizing that set. Right. And now you can go on like eBay. Like if you're interested in Hero Quest, there's guys selling it. Yeah, they, they want like 200, 300 bucks for, uh, just for mm-hmm. the game. But there'll be guys who like custom painted these figures and they'll be like, you want this 10 bucks? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's beautiful work. Mm-hmm. Um but then, yeah, and then also I've had Battle Masters. I have the original one here as well. Um, that game's hilarious. That it's it's it plays similar to Hero Quest, but it's literally instead of a tabletop game, it's a I think it's a four by five foot mat. So yeah, it's like yeah. the twisters, like Twister, right? You get down on the floor and move your move the units of your battalions and attack each other and and you it, actually it takes knock play- the characters down, right? Like there's right. like a little like a like a crossbow and and different things. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty that's pretty cool. Now, that game we don't play as much because Hero Quest, you you could take it out of the box and start playing within five minutes, right? That game, Battle Masters, you have to get all the figures on their bases, you have to get all the flags on the poles, you have to mm-hmm. do you guys remember this? You yep. have to get everything oh, yeah. divided, set up. And by the, it <laughs> literally takes almost an hour to <laughs> yes. set up. And yeah. and and this is someone who's played that game a hundred times. It takes an hour to set up. That's why Kent's garage was essentially a battle master's room for yep, right, about yep. half of senior year. Yeah, because we yeah, just didn't want to tear it down you, and put it back together. It, if you take everything down and put it back in the box, like you're not getting that damn thing back out. No, for months. Like like your yeah, buzz is already worn long. off. Like there's no way, man. You just leave that shit there. <laughs> come back tomorrow, finish the battle, and then start a new yep. one and just keep going. Like that's what we did. <laughs> Yeah, I really so. think that Battle Masters was an amazing concept, especially because it came out after Hero Quest, and it was built on that universe. But the problem is, is they made it so damn big and so damn cumbersome yeah. that it's so overwhelming. That I mean, who wants to like? 
I pulled this board game out. It's been an hour and we still haven't started playing yet. You know what I mean? It's yep. probably why that thing kind of tanked, right? It did get bad reviews back in the day. Um, Hero Quest though was pretty cool. I yeah. I, w- I was always always likened, uh, you know, people talk about, well, you try to get D&D and video games didn't work. And then, you know, eventually they got World of Warcraft and like it's it kind of works. Mm-hmm. But you're like, no, it's not the same. The stark difference between a digital and a tactile version or a physical version of uh, of that game would be just insane. Like it would not have the same feel. It, it, literally <laughs> well right but it, like half of that game's fun was like you can see the the battlefield and you're moving pieces and as soon as you move to piece and of course everybody has the same house rule we're like as soon as you move it you, if you let go it's done and as soon as yeah. you let go you realize that that now you're in range and you're like ah shit you know like that wouldn't be there like that <laughs> that that ah, it's just something about those big figurines you know and and jokes like Cookie, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the big, the big ogre guy, uh, the big yeah. ogre, yes, we, yeah, yeah we, ogre. yeah, we, um, yeah, we, we made, uh, we made him into a complete character with voices and cookie, <laughs> cookie. <laughs> now, do you guys remember? Speaking of Dungeons and Dragons, do you guys remember the uh, the old five and a quarter inch floppy disk Forgotten Realms Dungeons and Dragons games? Do you guys remember those like Pool of Radiance? Do you remember Pool, Pool of Radiance? Of Radiance. Which I that event... never played it. Now, I Pool remember of Radiance... seeing it, but I never played it. Pool of Radiance eventually got ported over to the Nintendo, so you can play it on the NES. There's yep. an 8-bit version of it. It was awful but... on the Nintendo, though. <laughs> it was awful, but on the on I mean, it wasn't great. It, it, it was cool. You it, know? it wasn't great but... on the computer, but it was awful. On the <laughs> I guess the, the world's worst port. <laughs> well, what's so funny is, you know, that's Dungeons and Dragons when they first started throwing those on the computer for us. And what's funny is you could play that, have fun, but it doesn't be sitting on the couch with your friends, sitting in a circle, using your imaginations, being creative and just creating a whole universe to play in together. I mean, that stuff. I mean, why do you think they brought that back in Stranger Things yep. and stuff like that? Because it just it touches uh, what is that? It touches the 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 kid inside of all of us, right? Yep. And uh, I would rather, even though I'm I'm 40, I would rather have my buddies come over and hey, let's bust out and play Magic or Dungeons and Dragons or something like that, versus hey, let's all huddle up in my arcade, right? Mm. I, I noticed that if we do that, we end up having a a a much better experience than you know, you know, just banging on some arcade machines. You know what I mean? So. Board, board games is uh, it's kind of funny. I came on here to talk about retro games, and we've been talking about board games the whole time. <laughs> but, right. but, but you got me going. You got me going. You pulled my string. We, we, <laughs> we have plenty of time yet to discover. The... <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, I love I just I love that stuff. I love that. And it's not for everybody. Right. Like, you know, my wife thinks we're idiots. Like when we do that stuff. Yeah. Um, I still but have. She, a, but what I, I have what a full I box of Gloomhaven. She's, she's willing to play, though. She's willing to play. Oh. So I, I have a yeah. full box of Gloomhaven that I took the time to make the the carriages for and like all the things and and I've got yeah. the little trays and everything and we just we have the summer caught up and COVID caught up and we just haven't made I won't say have had time but we haven't made time to play it and it's driving mm-hmm. me fucking nuts because the twins leave next month like they're gone I gotta play it now <laughs> yeah now, yeah you're gonna have to up? schedule all the time. What about that? Isn't that what is it? Roll twenty two. Is isn't that it? Isn't that the roll website 20. where you can do yep. the Dungeons uh, roll, and Dragons and, and roll um roll uh, twenty? That's yeah. I'm sorry, roll twenty. I wonder one? how they're doing with COVID. Do you think that their servers have just blown up with people oh, playing I virtually? Bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Fan- Fantasy Realms is the other the other system, the other competing system to roll twenty. Hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I know a lot of people have invited me to play in their servers for that. And I just haven't had time. Yeah. So, yeah. Good so stuff. good. So good. Um, Kent, what's legends center? What is, what is, this sounds important. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is important. Um, you know what? We're, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Uh, first I want to, I want to give a big shout out to our patrons out there that have supported us on patreon.com slash ritual misery. Amos, what can people expect if they go over to that? Uh, a lot of disappointment. 
Oh, no. No, I thought that's why they tuned it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's start this over. Bad plug. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. Uh, what, 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 what will they find? What will our, our potential patrons find when they go over there? You get pre-shows. You get post-shows. Today's, today's pre-show is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, once I started recording it. Because, <laughs> I mean... There's two things you can't fix with Patreon, me and Kent. Like, that's just... That's, uh, that's, yeah, I mean, you know what you're getting. You, in, in you know episode. I'm going to screw up the sound. You know he's going to be ugly. Like, there's only there's only so much you can handle. There's, Patreon can that's, only do so much. That's why I'm a podcaster. It's based for radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you, get a, you can get pre-shows, you get post-shows, you get exclusive content, some of the other things we don't release anywhere else. Uh, you can even go back to 1996 and watch us play fake instruments on a fake soundstage uh, while uh, lip-syncing to some Metallica at Myrtle Beach, and we're not embarrassed by it at all. No, but um, pa- patrons know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. Uh, we also we actually have two new tiers this week that I just introduced uh, well, a couple of days ago. Um, one of them is for people that want to hear. So we're we're not doing let's talk about thrones anymore. Now we're doing let's not talk about thrones. And we're going to start off with our first episode being the Hamilton uh, musical. And I'm sure there's going to be some pre-show. I'm sure there's going to be some post-show. There's going to be some cuts that just don't make the show. And you can get all that by being a Patreon or a patron at patreon.com slash virtual misery. Cruise on by there. There's a special one called Talkies. It's the, the level of, of Discord or little level of patronage called Talkies. It's um, f- five bucks a month. I think five, three, three or five bucks a month. It's something. I'm trying to bring it up, but... <laughs> You know, <laughs> shit's not going to work. Oh, there it is. It's going good. I didn't click the button. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so three bucks a month gets you talkies, gets you the pre-show, post-show, and as a special bonus, Jenny, Richard, and or I will get together at least once a month to talk about all the things that we normally talk about. We just don't record because we have some great conversations. And if you like hearing our points of view on crazy shit, that's where you want to be. And then we also have the Disco Talkers because we already had the Discordians group to get a special chat channel in Discord. Um, and now we have two special chat channels. So five bucks a month gets you access to both. And then, uh, above that, anything above that, the $10 a month or more will get you access to both regardless. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. And hopefully we'll get some people in there. Uh, the talkies is just for, let's talk about throne or let's not talk about thrones. And the other one is for both. You will get those separate feeds and all that other good stuff in your pod catcher. So cruise on by ritual misery. Pretty exciting. Dot com slash support yeah or patreon.com slash ritual misery will get you right in there to yep. the patronage exactly um amos i got a game what every time that these get i and it, you you do the games and then i gotta hit the button and then we gotta hear the sounder and then i gotta i i, I hey we I, hey we have a brand new sounder I, it's only a week old i gotta hope to beat the d and oh man it's so much pressure that's what she said what time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. <laughs> Stephen Cogswell. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Big Voice Jay. Thank you to all of our uh, Discordians that participated in that. My uh, game this week is titled Golden Age of Academia. No. Okay. okay, cool. All right. Is, so these is this like an encyc- be- is this an encyclopedia of of arcs? Like the St. Louis Arch? No, it's, I guess that's I guess that's an arch, not an arc. <laughs> right, right. Would right. this be like different so types this- of welding? So this game is about the golden age of arcade gaming, which uh anybody that doesn't know, the golden age of arcade gaming is the 1980s. So we're, we're gonna talk about some games from the 80s. I'm gonna flip a flip a virtual coin over on Google and see who goes first. Amos, uh, I'm gonna let Patrick call heads or tails. Uh, heads. I got tails. Uh, Amos, do you want to be first or second? <laughs> Always let the guest go first. Right on, right on. <laughs> all right, Patrick, your first question. Purely a strategic move, multiple, by the way, not manners at all. These are all multiple choice. <laughs> Okay. All right, Patrick, <clears throat> what is the most valuable bonus item in Pac-Man? Is it a pretzel, 
a banana or a key? Oh, geez. I thought it was I thought it was a key, wasn't it? It is the key. The key is worth 5,000 points versus only 100 points for a cherry. Nice. Nice. Well done, sir. Amos, your first question. What happens when you reach 990,000 points in Defender? You get extra lives. Game resets to the beginning. Or the game shuts down completely. I'm going to go with the last one. The game shuts down completely. Yeah, just fucking the, the, <laughs> the, the hard toggle switch on the back just flips off and you, it's like, fuck off, go home. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is uh, this game the uh, the answer is C? Should we just go with C <laughs> on all these? <laughs> well, um, I wouldn't recommend that because Amos, you are wrong. Uh, what happens at 990,000 points on Defender is that you get extra lives. However, if you get to a million points, the game will reset to the beginning. But you still get to keep your extra lives. Oh, very cool. So, yeah. So, so it doesn't magically flip itself off. That is, cr- <laughs> that is correct. I, I, um, I'm disappointed. I can imagine that the player flips off the cabinet uh, at certain <clears throat> points in the game. <clears throat> um, all right, Patrick, your next question. Okay. What color hair does the player's fighter have in Punch Out? Is it blonde, black, or green? It's B black. What? It is in fact green, green. hair. Oh yep. wait, you're talking about you're talking about you're talking about the arcade game. Yes. You're not talking about the. You know what's funny is everyone when they think Punch Out, they think of the Nintendo port, right? That's right. Yeah, not, the not, Mike Tyson. Not, yep. You got me, buddy. You, you're an <laughs> asshole, but but you got me because I. You're talking the wireframe character. Yep. Oh man, you you got me with that. I should have known that. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm going to retire. Turn off my YouTube channel. <laughs> this is it, guys. Keep up signing off because because Kent just uh, Kent just screwed me. Over Wait, but uh, yeah, oh, you're we're... right. And well, you have a chance to redeem yourself. Maybe maybe you don't have to get rid of your YouTube channel yet. Oh. Uh, but let's see let's see if we can get Amos to quit his YouTube channel. <laughs> Amos, your next one. What are the dragons called? In Dig Dug, are they Figars, Flubers, or Pukas? Figars. They are. They are in fact Figars. Yeah, the Pukas are the ones the uh, like the red balls wearing the the goggles. Those are the Pukas. I don't think there's anything called a Fluber. <laughs> At least not in Dig Dug. All right, so now we have a tie game at one point each. Patrick, we are back to you. What tool can you use to flip all enemies on the screen in Mario Brothers? Oh, isn't what it the, 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 the POW block? Isn't it the POW block? Your choices are cherry, POW block, or mushroom. And yes, you did, in POW fact, block. get that one correct. Yes, the POW block. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to anybody listening that's confused, I am talking about the original game called Mario Brothers, not Super Mario Brothers. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, I, Where I, you I would have to go all the way to Super Mario Brothers 2 to get the POW block. Yeah, Super Mario Brothers 2 is, that's, yeah. Let's not even talk about Super Mario Brothers 2. It's, Amos, instead, let's talk about Centipede. <laughs> Which of the following was not a threat in Centipede? My quarters. Cock- <laughs> cockroaches, spiders, or scorpions? Cockroaches. Cockroaches would be correct. Nice. The score is tied back up at I, two points apiece. I can't tell you how many times I played that game and the fucking roller bar wasn't working. <laughs> so I eventually just stopped playing it. Like, oh man, that game looks cool. That's that's what happened to me just a couple of months ago, and then I ordered Sheldon Sims uh, kit, and I was able to repair my my trackball. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of Patrick, it is now your turn. Your next question: Which of these does Popeye collect in the 1983 arcade title? Is it hearts, stars, or coins? 
it's uh it's hearts baby because we all love olive oil <laughs> that's right that is correct <laughs> olive throws out hearts and popeye tries to catch them before brutus gets hold of them very well done all right uh amos how many levels of pac-man do you need to complete for a perfect score 100 256 or 999 how many how many levels amos for a perfect score and um just for trivia purposes the perfect score the maximum possible score on pac-man is 3,333,360 how many levels do you have to complete before you can get that score uh, if you want to call uh, Billy Mitchell, we can hold. <sighs> that's, that's right. So you, so you can tell me about how he didn't do it. Um, <laughs> that's right, uh, that's right. So uh, your choices were 100, 256, or 999. The only one that makes sense is 256. <sighs> that is correct. It is. Okay. You played at 256 levels, uh, getting every pellet eating every ghost, you get a score of 3,333,360 points, and then the game just shuts itself off. Nice. All right. Um, let's see if I can score this correctly. Here we go. Uh, all right. So Carry the Amos, one. You are now tied. You tied it back up at three points apiece. This is the final question but, for each of you. But, but wait. Ten questions total. We each got three right. That means we got sixty percent of the questions right already. We've already beat the D. Well, you you're <laughs> get, you're getting the D yeah. right now. Let's yeah, we see got if the, you can beat the D. I, look, I, I, I'm confident that between the two of us, we're not just gonna get the D. We're gonna beat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick. All right. How many rows of aliens do players have to defeat? In Space Invaders. Is it three, five, or seven? Seven. Yeah, it's got to be seven. Do you say it's seven? I'm sorry, sir. It is five rows of aliens. What? Oh, wait. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Rigged. Uh, rigged. Rigged. It's rigged. This whole Amos, thing is rigged. Amos, your final question. Oh, shit. Now, now, now can't you put me in a position here? <laughs> because if I, if I get it right, then I outwitted the guest, which is just a dick move. <laughs> but if I don't get it right, then we didn't beat the D. We just got the D. Nobody wants to get the D. Yeah. Not even with a good reach around. Uh, really you better, you certainly get the D a lot on this show, Amos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Final question. Who is Mario trying to rescue in the original Donkey Kong? Oh, is this it, is a good. Go is it Darlene, Pauline, or Peach? Uh, I love this one. I know this one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, <clears throat> and where the hell's my damn chat room to help me out with this shit? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's bullshit. Yeah, chat room. Uh, hello, Jackie Hearn. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. But Jackie Hearn didn't play. She was too busy, like, like actually living back in the '80s to play video games too much. <laughs> than, than to play video games yeah. like us. <laughs> um, she says Peach. That's my first instinct because of Princess Peach for the Super Mario Brothers series. But that would be too easy. So I'm gonna have to go. Uh, what were the choices again? Give me the th three choices again. Darlene, Pauline, or Peach. I gotta go Pauline just for Dolly Parton. <laughs> uh yes. Oh my god, we beat the yeah, D. Correct. But uh Amos, uh you won the game with the score of four versus Patrick's three, but collectively you guys Sad. have beat the D. You have beaten I, the D. I'm just happy we didn't Good get job. the D. Good job beating the D. Well, I, I, I love the questions you chose because so many of those questions are if you try to answer too quickly, you get it wrong. Most people say peach, right? Most people think of the Nintendo ports for, you know, punch out and, and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So well done, sir. Well done, sir. Um, yeah, that was great. That was great. 
So yeah, oh, pretty cool. Fantastic. That was fun. Fan- fantastic. Uh, Amos, a little while ago, you asked about Legend Center. Patrick, what can you tell us about Legends Center? Yeah, so this is kind of an interesting story, and I'll try not to make your show drag. Is uh, you know, I started doing this YouTube channel, and at first, I was just doing product reviews, like everybody else, just product reviews on gaming decor, game room decor, as well as uh, game room products such as arcade machines and all that kind of stuff. And then I, you know, I realized that uh, there's an appetite for live streams, so we started doing live streams on the channel. Live streams started taking off a bit. And then eventually that turned into my own podcast show, The Loft Report Podcast, which people can check it out. It's on all the podcast listening platforms. Um, And we, of course, we live stream it and try to upload it later, although I need to upload like the last eight episodes. I've just been lazy (laughs) getting the last episodes on Spotify and all that. But so it's The Loft Report Arcade and Gaming Podcast Show, and I'm doing that independently. And it's where I just talk about everything going on in the world of arcades. Well, there's another guy, one of my friends, his name is Stephen Haywood. Uh, He's the owner operator of the Tech Buzz, which is another uh, YouTube channel. He does a lot of stuff with Telestream, audio, video, as well as arcade and gaming. He hosts a show on Friday nights called The Retro Buzz. So I do the Loft Report on Sundays. He does the Retro Buzz on Fridays. And one of the companies that we cover is At Games, and they have their own Legends Ultimate platform. And At Games has uh, they're migrating to basically be a cloud gaming company, right? They're doing a lot of online gaming, esports, and they're creating esports leagues for gaming. They're going to have esports leagues for uh, pinball, as well as bowling and things of that nature. And they came up with this idea: we would love to have a show, like a true esports show, like something you would see on ESPN. And they're like, well, who's going to host it, right? So when it, it's it's kind of a kind of an honor that At Games reached out to myself as well as Steven because they noticed the quality of our shows and they said, hey, guys, you're doing a great job on your show and you're doing a great job on your show. We'd love to put you together. And can you host a show for us? So that's how Legend Center was born. So basically, Legend Center, we've only done two episodes. Uh, the second episode was broadcast yesterday. It is a true esports gaming news broadcast show, much like you would see on Sports Center for like, you know, when they're having their Mortal Kombat tournaments and things like that. And uh, it's high production. It's high. It's high quality. I don't know. Kent, have you seen a couple of the episodes? I have. Yes, yep. I have seen both episodes. And yeah, it, the set very much looks like Sports Center. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully they don't sue us. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> l- let's just say they 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 granted us inspiration, right? And we turned it into. So what's really cool is this is like the first official out of all these companies, Arcade One Up at Games, because even Arcade One Up is starting to get into online gaming with their NBA Jam cabinet. Now mm-hmm. you can play online against your friends, and it has online leaderboards and things of that nature. And I'm pretty sure that they're going to have NBA Jam tournaments for their community and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, what's really cool about At Games is they're already ten steps ahead of them, and they're they're creating this gigantic esports league with this flagship show to broadcast the results of the league and all that kind of stuff. And we've had a lot of fun in the last couple of weeks putting this show together. So it was quite an honor that they reached out to us and asked us to to do this for them. And it's uh, it's really cool, man. So hopefully that I didn't put your audience to sleep, but that's <laughs> that that's the story. That's how that's that's how all this got uh, hatched. That's how the egg hatched. So yeah, no that that is awesome. If if you uh, speaking to the audience now, if you are into home arcade gaming at all, I I definitely encourage you to check this out, especially if you have an at games. Uh, Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabinet. Um, I, I started watching your videos, Patrick, when, mm. like, right, actually, I started watching you right before I ordered, because um, Cool Toy was the first uh, YouTube streamer that I watched because I was just trying to find reviews of this new arcade cabinet I'd heard about. Uh, I've been wanting to build my own main cabinet for several years, and then Arcade 1UP came into existence, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is pretty cool. And then I found out about what at games had coming out. So I wanted to get as much information I, as I could. And Cool Toy was the first the first streamer that I watched about it. And I remember him recommending a video from his buddy P Dubs. I was like, ooh, who's this P Dubs guy? I gotta I gotta watch his videos now. And Sounds um, like I've been... a rapper. Was he a rapper? <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> turns out he's a he's a rapper that uh that uh, performs in the loft of his house. <laughs> yep, P Dub's arcade loft. Worst um, title 
worst name of a YouTube channel ever. I should have just called it P-Dubs Arcade, uh, but I added loft because my arcade is in my loft. I'm in Arizona. We don't have basements, guys. We don't have basements in Arizona. We either have a den or a loft. My house, uh, I had to use the loft per the wife's instructions. So I have about... (laughs) I have about 15 arcade machines and a couple pinball machines all crammed up there right now. And also I have like uh, right there, you can kind of see the marquee behind me. Got the At Games of Legends Ultimate here in my office. Um, plus I have uh, multiple arcade machines and stuff downstairs as well. It's starting to take over the whole house. Uh, I feel bad for my wife, but uh, it's my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh I love man i love it to death. i'm like i promise i'll condense or or if she's like when is this cabinet getting out of here guys remember pro tip fellas whether it's a guy coming to pick up an arcade machine or the plumber coming to fix that slow drip under the sink always tell him this i got a guy coming for that that's all you got to say i got a guy coming for that but don't give him dates just say i got a guy coming for that and she's like oh there's a guy coming okay okay cool you know what i mean that's all i gotta say you're done Pro tip, guys. <laughs> you know, hey, crazy. when are you gonna? When are you gonna repaint the shed? Oh, I got a guy coming for that. <laughs> so I got to say, guys, gets you out of trouble. It buys you minimum four months, minimum four months before they ask you again. So always That's remember incredible. that. That's incredible. Great pro tip. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. Um, so the reason, so not only am I a fan of your channel, but the reason that I wanted to have you on the show sure. in particular is because you have very similar interests to Amos and me. Um, it turns out that uh, through watching your videos, I've discovered that you're a Star Wars fan. Um, yeah. I heard you mention Lord of the Rings. Um, I hear you once in a while talk about pro wrestling. Um, I've, I've even seen you dress up as Val Venus. Uh, <laughs> um, a lot of a lot of the interests that I have, you have, and uh, one one interest that you have uh, the similar to Amos is spreadsheets. Oh yeah, both of you, <laughs> both of you, so, for some reason find spreadsheets erotic. <laughs> love them, man. I'm I, Excel. I, if I could make love to Excel, I would. So uh, that's I, all I got. I'm a total well, data whore. It, yeah. Well, well, guys, I mean, in my now keep in mind, my my YouTube and all this social media BS, that's all part that's all part time at night. Right. In my full time life, I'm a I'm an underwriter, I'm an insurance underwriter. I've been an underwriter for almost 20 years, guys. I'm, you know, so like dealing with spreadsheets and underwriting and reviewing risks and managing risks. That's what I do day in and day out. So, you know, if I can squeeze in an Excel joke on my channel every now and then <laughs> I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? I even created myself. Did you see the funny meme I made of me as an Excel character? Did you see that at all? Oh, Where it's an Excel, it. it's an Excel spreadsheet with glasses, big teeth and a goatee looks just like me. <laughs> um, in fact, I think that's going to become the new logo on my channel. You know what I'm saying? So. Amazing. <laughs> that, that's I, fantastic. I, I was tasked with uh, figuring out a way to track who had done what chores and all that other stuff. <laughs> I have an automated chore <laughs> spreadsheet that each week totals it up and gives us. And, 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 and yeah, yeah. Like, th- this is what I do. This is like just my daily life. Like my first solution anytime I have data is go to Excel. It's I when, once you learn Excel, you you it just can manage your whole life, guys. It's like it's amazing, you know. <gasps> like I, you know, you can data track like, hey, you know, this is the appropriate times and volumes of when you should go to the bathroom. Like, I mean, it'll it can track your whole life. Go nuts, guys. Go nuts with Excel. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Patrick, I've got I've got a very important question for you. Sure. Star Wars, pro wrestling, spreadsheets. Fuck one, marry one, kill one. I would probably <laughs> fuck a spreadsheet. <laughs> Because you can design were, it however you wanted. What, 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 what were the other two options? <laughs> Star Wars or pro I'm wrestling? So, I'm so aroused, I forgot what they were. <laughs> uh, I would probably, yeah, I'd fuck a spreadsheet. I'd marry Star Wars and pro wrestling because although I've been a pro wrestling fan for 35 years, since I was five years old, um, you know, currently it's kind of in a state of decline right now, right? It's really hard to watch right now. Part of it is trying to watch pro wrestling today in these empty arenas. It just kills it. It shows you how not having the magic of the live crowd really just 
ruins the broadcast. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I feel really bad for the WWE, AEW, TNA, all these companies that are trying to bring us entertainment, but they have no crowd. Right. Mm-hmm. And it shows you how important the crowd is. So like at this point right now, if it had to stay this way, like if it never returns to normal, I think I would have to cut loose the wrestling. I, w- I would marry Star Wars and I would make sweet love to that spreadsheet. <laughs> I have, in fact, I have a formula just for that. <laughs> it's amazing. That is fantastic. <laughs> Nailed uh, it. I'm going to assume <laughs> shot, man. I, I'm going to assume that you you bring in the uh, you bring in the macros for that formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's called the Mac Attack, so I like to Mac on my spreadsheet. So. Um, all right, let's get off spreadsheets, literally. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. Oh, dang. Um, wow. Uh, I don't even know where to go from here. <laughs> Holy cow. Hey, hey, Kent, have you ever had a tawny port? Uh, who? A tawny port. I don't think so. It's a Portuguese red wine, a sweet red wine from Portugal that is aged in a barrel. And it's amazing. I- I got some for Rick for her birthday yesterday. She didn't like it. That means it's all mine, which is good because it was like 50 bucks. And it tastes like raisins, cherries, and deliciousness. Nice. I recommend a Tawny Port. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I, I don't think I've actually had a Portuguese wine. I've, I've had some French wines. I've had plenty of Italian wines, pl- plenty of German wines, and, of course, American wines. I don't think I've ever had a Portuguese one. Yeah, I just figured I'd, I'd bring that up because why not? It was delicious. <laughs> uh, man, fantastic. Amos, uh, what what do we have coming up very soon? What is, what is in the uh, the Amos playlist for the weekend? Sunday, noon Pacific, Hamilton, Ritual Misery Discord. Fucking be there. <laughs> Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. If you are not already a member of our Discord, what are you waiting for? Get in there. It's right. easy. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. We talk about all kinds of cool things in there. We watch shows together sometimes. We um, have uh, uh, group interaction things. We help you. You sometimes help us make the games for for our episodes. Uh, get in there, participate. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Uh, what else, Amos? Let's not forget your birthday, as Curtis LaRock kindly reminded me. Because he's, uh, yeah. because he's a good fucking human, that's why. Uh, that's so right. yeah, your birthday's tomorrow. <laughs> Make sure to tweet Kent all your fucking... Uh, let's go with... Um, tweet Kent all of your dank puppy memes tomorrow for his birthday. <laughs> I like puppy memes. Yeah, yeah. send them my way. Nice. Dank, um, dank yeah. puppy memes. I, I want to see. I want to see puppies that are just blazed. I want to see puppies with beer bottles in front of them, just empty beer bottles, just sprawled <laughs> out. Yeah, that's that's gonna be me tomorrow. So that would be that would be appropriate. Not as cute. Uh, fantastic, <laughs> Patrick. Patrick, remind us again. Uh, what what is the what are all of the creative endeavors that you have, and and when can we view them? Sure, sure. So uh, we usually broadcast the. Loft Report Arcade and Gaming Podcast Show on Sundays at a 11 a.m. Pacific time. So this Sunday, I'm going to make sure we cut that show at one hour at the most so I can flip over and watch your guys' Hamilton broadcast. Pretty excited about that. But, uh, yeah, so on my YouTube channel, plus it's YouTube.com, P-Dubs Arcade Loft, Facebook.com, P-Dubs Arcade Loft. We, all, we multicast on those platforms as well as sometimes on Twitch uh, and all that stuff. So that's on Sundays. And then on Wednesdays, uh, we broadcast the Legend Center, which is the esports gaming show uh, sponsored by and for uh, the At Games arcade machine platform, which is really cool. So I usually have those two podcasts every week. And then, of course, I drop various YouTube videos however often I can uh, about, you know, product reviews, product mods, all that kind of stuff for the arcade gaming community. So. And all that stuff. Although, man, I would really just like to sit down and uh, play with some Excel right now. You guys got me all excited. <laughs> hey, you guys uh, got me all excited. Don't don't sell your channel short. Sometimes there is a, a special effects laden Star Wars extravaganza happening yes. over there, which is pretty pretty phenomenal. I encourage everyone I, to go find that, Jim. I I heard all of that, <laughs> and we're gonna have links to all that stuff in the show notes. But Thank I have so to wonder. 
when are we going to get the Patrick B. Kent face-off on some of these classic games? So I actually, I, so I, I actually mentioned this to Patrick recently. Uh, we haven't really, we haven't discussed it. I see some crossover capabilities here. Like I don't, yeah, so yeah, we can definitely do a channel crossover. Now, guys, what's really cool about the At Games Legends Ultimate is they have their arcade net feature, right? And right now they have 50 games that we could hop on right now. You fire up your Legends, I fire up mine. We can join each other's game, and either we could tag team and go up against the computer, or we could fight each other in some of the fighting games. Like they have, what, Art of Fighting on there, King of Fighters. Um, mm-hmm. We could join King of Monsters which I love that game. I don't know if you guys remember King of Monsters or oh, yeah. we could team up. We could team up and do metal slug, uh, Akari warriors, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I would love for to do that. We could do a broadcast, a simulcast on both your guys channels and mine with Kent and I playing our legends ultimate. That's what it's all about. That's what esports and cloud gaming is all about. It's going to keep retro gaming alive, but also add a modern twist to it. And that's what excites me because think about it. There's a lot of folks out there who bought their arcade one up NBA jam cabinet just because they, they have the ability to play online because guess what? If you have a main cabinet, multi-cade, I dude, I already have 20 different ways to play that game. I had no interest in buying that arcade cabinet when they announced it. But when they announced that it had online capability and that I could play other people who have the cabinet, it made me pull the trigger, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's why I love the Legends Ultimate and uh, all that kind of stuff is us having the ability to play against each other. It's just so cool to me. And it's keeping these retro games alive. Every weekend, At Games does these big leaderboard contests for all their users, And guys, we're talking games that haven't been touched in 20 years. And, you know, these people are blowing the dust off them. (sighs) And they are. (laughs) And and last weekend, they broke records for the most games played in a single weekend for like retro games online. And it broke the weekend before, the weekend before, the weekend before. So I'm expecting it's going to break again this weekend. And it's so cool that they found a way to keep these retro games alive. So I know I sound like I'm preaching. (laughs) <laughs> but it means so much to it, it means so much to me because yeah. these are the games we grew up with and these are the games we don't want to let go of. Yeah, there's a PlayStation 5 and there's an Xbox 1000X or whatever it's called. <laughs> but pretty I, close, pretty close. But here's the problem is when I play those games and I love those games is it takes me like 20 hours to play a game. It takes me like 20 hours to go fetch, run around and do something, right? What's really cool about retro games, guys, is they will never change. You can hop on on your lunch break. You have 30 minutes, play five or six times your favorite game. And you just it just bring it just fills you with joy. Right. That's what I love about it. You know, it's just point click and play. It's not like run here, go pick up this, bring it back here. Now come here. You know what I mean? It's like, have I even accomplished anything? Zelda, the, the Legend of Zelda game on the Switch, the one that they launched with the Switch, beautiful game, one of my favorite games of all time. But I've sat there for four hours, five hours, and not advanced the storyline at all. I don't know about you guys. Like, literally, you're just running around, just, okay, I got to go grab this, and I got to go pick up this, and I got to climb this goddamn mountain. You know what I mean? And you're <laughs> like, have I have I even accomplished anything, really, in the last four or five hours, right? <sighs> So, and I could have played Space Invaders 80 times in those four or five hours. Right, so, right. Yep. 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 Hope that makes sense. Amos, when are you going to get on the the in-home arcade bandwagon? Tomorrow. Not 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 anytime soon, unfortunately. <laughs> hey, the, um, we're getting so ready. The we're, older... we're, sending, we're sending two kids to college in a different state uh, next the, month. So The older, like the first gen uh, arcade one-up machines you can get for $50 or less if, yeah. if they're in stock <laughs> at your local Walmart. Right. Yep. Uh, there was somebody There was somebody a couple of months ago I saw that even got one for a dollar. Like, no kidding. Like, one dollar. Now, I, I have considered, because I'm not using it for anything else, the, the home automation thing kind of... I don't know if it lost my interest or it just got to a level where I just didn't want to pursue it anymore, but I have thought about turning my, my pie four into a retro pie. Oh, there you and, go. Uh, that, that sounds fantastic. Because I, I, I have all the ROMs. I love the games. I just, I don't play because there's complications. There's, you know, there's elite dangerous taking up my time, hyper driving <laughs> galaxies and shit. Yep. Uh, for a Pi 4, I have a Pi 4, and I have the Wolfenos 256 gigabyte Pi 4 Supreme image on there. Mm. 
highly recommend you get that one. You're going to love it. It's got shit 10,000 games on there, everything that you've ever loved growing up, and even a lot of modern games that obviously because the Raspberry Pi 4 is a lot more powerful than Pi 3, so it's able to run some of this stuff much better than what we had, you know, the last couple of years. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, recommend that image for you, buddy. Yeah, definitely. Ah, see, now, now, now you're, now you're talking my language. <laughs> Amos, <laughs> Amos, if, if, uh, if you want people to, to keep up with, with your progress on the retro pie, where would they do that? Progress on the retro pie or just, Denying the government its ability to steal the wealth from the poor. You can cruise on over to Ethan Kane on Twitter, E T H A N C A I N E, and hear all my sarcasm and uh, uh, try to catch all the ham- Hamble drops because there's been quite a few lately. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm I am pretty fucking R- excited about this movie. <laughs> I'm at RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter if you want to follow me there. Um, pretty much Del Noche or Del Noche 77 anywhere else on the internet. Now, uh, Patrick, now, Patrick now, what's... Now, now, Kent, I yes. don't want people to mess up your birthday. So tomorrow, <laughs> okay. July 3rd, don't mess with Kent's birthday. But until midnight tonight, your local time, and after midnight tomorrow, your local time, Barrage Kent with Hamill drops and reasons he should actually give a shit about this musical. Because yeah, tomorrow it's all it's all the uh, puppy memes, right? Yeah, the yes, tomorrow's puppy, puppy memes all day. The, puppy yeah. memes all day. <laughs> uh, uh, dank ass puppy memes for his birthday. Other than that, hit him up with uh, give him give him all of your essays and your links and everything else, and I promise he'll follow at least one of the links uh, as to why he needs to check out Hamilton <laughs> and why it's worth his while. Other than the fact that I'm doing a fucking podcast with Richard and Jenny, two of right. my favorite people. That's right. <laughs> uh, Patrick, once once again, where, where should people go uh, if they want to see more? So whether it's uh, Twitter, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, just type in P-Dubs Arcade Loft and it'll pop up. It's the same handle everywhere. And you can follow, subscribe, check out the podcast shows as well as all the other goofy retro gaming videos we uh we happen to uh you know release i don't want to say drop because uh people think p-dubs is a rapper so i can't say <laughs> not dropping videos over here we're, we're releasing low it's low all, production all, quality content it's all about, <laughs> it's all about that release if it's you want to follow our show it's at ritual misery on twitter <laughs> And you can join the Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord, all lowercase. I think it works uppercase, but it definitely works all lowercase. Stop on by there, <laughs> bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Or you can find all these links or more ways to support the show or give us feedback over at our website, ritualmisery.com. And we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Jeez. Thank you to Kevin McLeod. Yeah. Uh, luckily, yeah, I hit the button yeah. again and cancel it out. Thank you to, for listening, for Kent, for Patrick, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. And let's not forget Kevin McLeod because I read out of order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Patrick. See ya. Thanks, guys. <laughs>